Hello, welcome to this episode of Pete's Garden here on the Garden Report channel. Uh, it's a bit cold and it's a bit slightly wet and damp out here, but I thought there's just enough time before the rain comes down to give you a tour of the garden at home. So uh, if you could click subscribe, comment and like and share and all that business, that'd be great. Thanks very much and roll titles. Now, we're starting in the greenhouse and uh, there's the celery. There was a fourth one um, at the back there, there, but that's died off. And I think what I really want to say is what's going on in the greenhouse is um, an example of what happens when you don't use the right compost because as you can see that celery you know is I mean it, it's all right they're good plants what the ones that are there but you know I haven't I didn't get much um, I put in enough celery for probably 16 or 20 plants so I ended up with that um, and they're not very well developed really for the time of year you'd expect them to be a bit thicker than that and it's the same as what happened with these antirhinums you know if they were the, this sort of size in may or june that would be really good um but they weren't um they're only this size now and they've taken a lot longer there's the door um blowing down they've taken a lot longer to um to get to that point and that's because i put them i think anyway it's because i put them in multi-purpose compost that wasn't particularly good most of my plants still did well but some of them like the celery and the antirhinums um really suffered so next year i will put them in proper seed compost there's um, some rosemary which I'll be potting out um, soon and I think um, oh no they're not rosemary um, they're carnations and again they were an example of the same thing um, they should have you know bushed out much more by now but uh, they haven't over here here's some rosemary which I will put out soon and some Welsh onions as well which I will put out um, some perennial flowers which I'll be putting out soon as well Enothera I'm actually really pleased with these ones um, and, more, and uh, Oxeye Daisy there Achillea very beautiful foliage and uh, the rest of the greenhouse is starting to get a bit full as well that's my seed tin by the way well, perhaps i shouldn't shouldn't show brands should i um so um because uh, if you don't know this is a very new greenhouse um so i've sown some late sowing turnips there which you can't see coming through because i only did them i think yesterday but that's the variety purple top milan and some carrots which I sowed in a Pete's Garden episode I think a couple of weeks ago um, they're all coming through really well they're probably only because they're only finger carrots they're Nantes ones so um, they're probably only about six or eight weeks away from uh, picking now and one other thing to show you in the greenhouse uh, this is where I've been, whoops, I can get it undone, this is where um, I've been drying my mint and um, uh, I've got them tied together like that, some people tie them up um, inside their sheds, upside down. I just put them upside down in a bag 
and a greenhouse. I'll try that together later actually when I'm not holding a camera. Um, and I'll do it in the greenhouse because because uh, I haven't got a shed at home. Um, so let's come on to the container area. And um, in here we've got the pot leaks. Very good um, quality, I think. Very happy with them. I'll definitely do them again next year. It's the first time I've done it. Pennine F1. They are. Highly recommend those. Obviously, if I was doing them for showing or whatever, I'd have them in a greenhouse or, you know, and, and probably use an exhibition variety and all that. But I'm not, I never do stuff for showing. So, uh, there we are. I'm happy with that. Some more potatoes over here. Um, I've already had a crop out of this bag and I'm just, uh, uh, just keep um, recovering them every time they come through now. Um, and these are, there's nothing in here, this is just compost I'm, and soil I'm using to cover up the potatoes. And the stuff over the back here, they're all pots which contain the daffodils and the crocuses and I shall be bringing those out um, and over to here to show them off a bit more in the winter. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what happened to the nasturtiums at the back, they all got uh, aphids and they all died off, so we cleared them away. And as it happened, that was quite a good thing in the end because our next door neighbour needed someone to come over this side and do some guttering for him on his uh, warehouse thing next door. So that worked out all right in the end, really. And over here we have um, the area where I've put in some very late peas. Now they're not peas for overwintering. They are Hurst green shark peas, which you should, according to the packet, it says it should go in no later than July, but I'm afraid I don't agree with that. That's rubbish because we're down here in the southeast of England and um, I was going to put these peas in absolutely tons of them on my old allotment in July but then I ended up transferring to this new allotment um, which I showed you in last week's or the last episode of Peach Garden and so I ended up not putting those peas in so I'm putting them in here in September and in the other um, area which I'll show you in a moment. Um, now here we've got the kind of three sisters bed if you like. We've got the sweet corn which that one's been damaged a bit by wind but the other eight plants have grown perfectly well. Um, uh, I did end up buying them quite late in the season in the garden centre um, so they are a bit late, but I still I'm still expecting that if the excuse me if the weather um, brightens up again, we should get enough time left in the season to still get a good crop. Butternut squashes and cucumbers. Some of them have generally been disappointing. Again, it was a story of me using the wrong compost at the start of the season and that, so therefore a lot of the seeds didn't come through and um, I ended up taking what the garden centre had to offer which wasn't very good. Powdery mildew that can be avoided by using mag uh, by having a lot of magnesium in your soil. Up until this year topping the soil up with a bit of mineral water every now and again has been enough to stop the powdery mildew killing off the plants but as you can see there it has killed off the pumpkin plant but I've still got a couple of nice little pumpkins on there which are ripening very nicely so that's good. Uh, we've got nice uh, lemony smelling plants in there like the tagetes so that's nice. The courgette 
actually I can see in there that something's eating it yeah eating bits of it so we've got clearly got a fox but we've got quite a few other or a mouse or something in there but we've got quite a few other courgettes off here and this is a particularly mildew resistant variety it's called Defender F1 and resistant means that although it still catches it as you can see um, it then still produces plenty of leaves which don't have it so you still get a good crop what I'm going to have to do however though is um, next year whichever area I decide I'm going to use for squashes and things I'm obviously going to have to dig in some Epsom salts and some other things which contain magnesium as well into the bed in, in winter probably um, we still have been getting plenty of um, cucumbers though there's a cucumber can there's uh, one there I'll probably pick that in a minute um, and we've got some butternut squashes um, there as well we had um, a nice Ishikuri red squash which I picked the other day as well and when we come up here it is a bit of a sadder story um, but we've got some nice flowers in there but it, again it's down to the compost and this this year the big lesson for me has been sort out the quality of your compost if you've got too many clumps and lumps and wood shavings and frankly crap in your multi-purpose compost at the start of the season it's going to affect things further down the line having said that we have got some nice runner beans on here because i do like to have some runner beans trailing across the ground sometimes it's just nice to have that and um, there's a few there's some little um, butternut squashes on there um, we've already had um, a couple of marrows off which my neighbours have given me so not off our own glance but um, at least it's something towards the squash store and uh, and that really is the we've got a bit of mint because we used to have a mint bush going along here and it stays in the ground um, uh, but uh, that is the squash bed so we've got an annual flower border and it starts with this pyracantha which did have these lovely white blossoms on it and they've now become these beautiful orange berries which between now and winter the birds shall have off um, and now uh, I should have been much better really it would have been much better if I had um, sorted out things like the slug traps much earlier in the season um, towards the end of February really rather than the middle of April end of April like I did because we've ended up with all along here only two runner bean plants and that's after me um, constantly replacing them um, but we're still going to get quite a good crop we just won't get a crop that's enough for us to put some in the freezer because um, we've got some runner bean plants over there in the squash patch so and we've got some some runner beans coming off and the beans that we are getting um, are very nice some nice cosmos there um, the flowers down here are looking very nice we've got some potatoes which normally when you get volunteer potatoes cropping up I would just pull them out but because of the potato mowing incident earlier in the year when 150 plants were mown in cold blood on my uh, plot on my old plot um, I'm keeping these ones and I'm letting them grow and I'm seeing what I get from them there's a really beautiful cosmos plant now this is the variety of cosmos I actually really wanted to grow um, this year but again because of multi-purpose compost and not using the right one um, 
we didn't get any of those plants survive. But this, um, the, the, the cosmos that we obviously had last year, must have seeded itself because this came up over the other side of the garden where the cosmos was growing last year. So we transplanted it to here where we wanted it and surrounded it with these other smaller cosmoses that we could get from the garden centre. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the seed from this particular uh, cosmos this year uh, and make sure to grow it next year in proper seed compost, proper conditions and uh, we should get a whole a whole bed of um, four and five feet tall cosmos um, there's some more down there salvias um, which we have uh, deadheaded the camera just refocuses, there we are um, some old coleus there with a little carrot growing in amongst it that I'm leaving um, the coleus um, because it's really a greenhouse or, or an indoor plant um, and I do like the look of it uh, I'm going to be taking these up and putting them in pots in the greenhouse before the winter comes and there's our other climbing runner bean plant as opposed to the ones which are trailing and here's some more there's some nice salvia and here's some more volunteer potatoes and that's the, so that's the, the annual bed for this year we have what I suppose you could call a winter bed in front of the greenhouse and uh, we have I suppose about 70 or 80 parsnips um, which did germinate very well they've got these brown colouring on them I think that's just um, because of uh, just because they're dying off but actually I seem to now that I talk about it I seem to remember it might be a sign of things like canker so actually here's the brown staining uh, if you have an idea of what that what disease that might be if it is a disease then please do let me know in the comments box below and if there's anything I can do about it as well and I shall be having a quick look in my uh, book about it at some point but yes I've just thought of that there might actually be a disease um, but the parsnips underneath are growing quite well anyway let's have a look there we are and of course you can pick them now it's just that I like to leave them in there because then the frost comes and that's when you get the proper flavour to them and it's always better I think to have something available in winter anyway Brussels sprout plants now they are being a bit eaten I do keep checking them for caterpillars every now and again but the the plants themselves are surviving perfectly well and it is my experience with Brussels sprouts that they get a little bit eaten but it never affects the quality or the productivity of the sprouts. The leeks we put out I suppose about a month ago, something like that and um, even though they look really small um, they, I can see that they're actually developing quite well. They, they, um, look quite thick compared to how they were when they went in. So, and we've got, I suppose, I don't know, 50 of those, I think. Um, here is um, some more, some the, the other uh, Hearst green shaft peas there. So I'm hoping that between this section here and that little section at the end that I showed you earlier, um, that actually, um, it should be quite a big crop. I'd like to be able to not just have some at the time of cropping them, but have a, some to put in a little box in the freezer would be nice. Strawberries. Now, if you don't know the story with the strawberries, then they were there in containers. Then we had some a damp issue here, and um, there were some wood lice. 
um, that got into the containers. So I moved them down there, thinking that would solve it. But of course, wood lice can stay in the soil and live in the soil. So we were going to then take the plants out and get rid of, dispose of all the compost and clean all the pots, which I will still do actually. But we decided we might as well put the strawberries in here because apparently in the in the actual soil itself as opposed to comp um, as opposed to in containers you can get predators which will naturally um, cancel out some of the things like wood lice which would otherwise eat your plants and those predators don't necessarily occur in compost or or container soil well we come now to the perennial border and I have to say this is probably the area that I'm most happy with um, out of everything in the garden this year. Um, this has been, a, to me, um, in terms of what we're trying to achieve with it, a resounding success. Obviously you've got some nasturtiums there which are, for those who don't know, are annuals and will die off at the end of the year and they seeded themselves from last year. I won't let these seed themselves this year. Um, so, so, so there we go. And I've taken quite a lot out already. Um, but it's nice to have them there for now, you know. Um, there's some cat mint, which doesn't look very good, but has actually um, grown quite a lot this year. That is perennial, and the reason why we have it here is because although I like to have cats in the garden, I want to attract them away from the nest box that's at the end, and I want to get them to come down here and get rubbed up, which is what the cat mint does. Um, then we have things like that thing there, which has grown tremendously in the last couple of months, um, which I think is the Equinox. I think that's uh, Echinox ruthenicus, but don't quote me on it. And there's another one over here. Um, in fact, let me just find it, there we are. Um, and I've just read the label, and it is Echinox ruthenicus. Now, the thing with this is, as you can see, we've got this old tree root um, here. And there's never anything, that, understandably, obviously, there's never anything that grows well next to this so to have the equinox bulb um, you know starting to establish itself properly there is really good and we might get to the point where we can hide these hide this tree stump a lot better the roses now the thing with my roses is they are a bit out of position now because this shed has been built here since we put these roses here um, but they've still produced quite well considering that um, and, but I do need to probably uh, feed them a bit better and I shall be looking for some kind of muck um, to um, dig in around there or put around there as a mulch in winter um, so that I can get better over the years at uh, feeding them but they've, you know, they've, uh, they do still produce quite well um, heliotrope this is doing really well um, it was probably about half that size when I first put it in and um, produced some flowers which um, died so we cut them off and I was a bit concerned for a while about whether that was the right thing to do but as you can see they have produced um, uh, some nice flowers and um, this is the one that smells a bit like um, talcum powder. Puts a bit of a talcum powder smell in to the air. Potentilla. This is a really beautiful plant when they're all in flower. Because you get flowers the same colour as um, that one. Um, which, there we are. And... Uh, they are really beautiful flowers um, and they produced them in profusion and then they all went to seed so I've cut the seed off and I shall be sowing some I think you sow them in the autumn 
in the greenhouse and uh, hopefully get a few more plants out of that next year. Um, but it's really a lovely plant. Uh, there's some more Echinops, which I need to weed that area. Um, there we are. Um, now, Coreopsis. Um, all of the ends were eaten, all of the flower heads were eaten, and you can see the stems have died off, but um, there's quite a lot of greenery down there, so clearly the, uh, the plant is putting on enough growth to come back quite well next year, it looks like. Um, I've forgotten what this is called. Echinacea, that's it, that's the one, um, and they're clearly being affected by the uh, slightly colder and overcast and damp weather, and I think that's what's causing the blackened edges of the petals, but the bees absolutely love them, they're producing more flowers, you can see down there, and uh, yeah, good on Echinacea. Now, oh, and there's some uh, Eryngium down there. That's not the best version of it we've had in the garden. Um, and that's not either, but it's a bit better. That one is, and as you can see, um, they're all sort of turning to seed, or I don't know if it produces seed, actually, but um, we'll see. Um, and it looks uh, quite good as far as I'm concerned. It's been in flower for... Uh, at least a couple of months now. now there's a few things there I'm not quite sure what they are I think they're just uh, things which have seeded themselves from next door I'm quite happy to leave those for the moment, but at least the ones which are not interfering with my perennial bulbs this thing, this grassy looking thing is Nifophia which is the red hot poker and I'm told apparently that will start flowering um, towards the end of the month, if not into next month. And then the second year onwards, it flowers much earlier. Um, and then we've got um, ivy coming through from next door. More echinacea there. Um, very nice too. More nephophias. We did have a bit of a story with the lupins because, as you can see, you can't see any. Um, and that's because they were eaten by the slugs and snails. Um, and then my neighbour gave me some and they were eaten by the slugs and snails as well. But my attitude is, do you know what? Um, if the lupins are really enjoyed by the slugs and snails, then I just won't put any more lupins in. I'll just find something else to put in the perennials border. Um, you know, next year maybe that isn't lupins and therefore hopefully won't get eaten by the slugs and snails. I don't want to be... My neighbour suggests putting out slug pellets and things and maybe there are some slug pellets which are perfectly safe for birds and cats but I'm not entirely sure of that and I don't really want to risk it so I'll just stick something else in there next year that isn't lupins so there we go so I'm in one of the container areas and this is the area which had a, um, a small plastic greenhouse over it up until the last couple of months so the things that were in there I've just left there um, so these are greenhouse varieties, which is why this cucumber obviously is now, um, you know, coming to the end of its life. And um, I think we have, do have a touch of blight there, um, perhaps. Um, you know, but the thing is, I wasn't really expecting all that much from these things anyway. And because I took the greenhouse away after all, and they are producing quite well they have produced us quite a few tomatoes we've got a few cucumbers off of that before it started going off so I'm not too unhappy with that we have some lovely um, petunias there it's starting to rain heavy more heavily as you can tell 
Mimulus has now run to seed. I might have to collect some seed from that. We have some potatoes, obviously the spiritual is growing in there as well. So they've seeded everywhere this year. Potatoes um, coming through there, um, which I was expecting to have harvested them by now, but the, the thing hasn't started dying off. There's some mint, a pen I've left around. Um, there's some mint starting to come through again after I cut it all off to dry it in the greenhouse. Some a pepper plant starting to be eaten a little bit now, but it's still got a few peppers. We've had quite a few of it, um, which is not bad. Some more mimulus that's run to seed. I should probably do something with these containers now, actually. Um, these nasturtiums, if you if you ever get a variety of nasturtiums which say they'll trail over the side of hanging baskets, don't believe it, because that didn't work for me at all. I won't be doing that again. Um, in the herb section, we have some thyme there. I'm going to be quick about this because the rain is coming down. Some rosemary, some more parsley. We've been using that, and it's been acting as a biennial as well. This is the second year we've used the same plant, but it's come to the end now. Chives, thyme, basil, some more thyme which I potted out from the greenhouse uh, the other day, more basil, sweet potato, here we go, oh, um, a couple of dead things, I won't bother telling you about those, rosemary, Welsh onions, rosemary, something else that's dead, some dianthus up here that is uh, producing some really beautiful flowers. I'm not going to even leave that long enough for the camera to focus there. And some really lovely um, things which my mum got for her birthday from my sister. And there's a look of the whole garden. And I'll be back with another episode of Pete's Garden soon um, uh, when it's not raining. Well that's it, thanks for watching um, and there'll be another episode of Pete's Garden up soon so if you could like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff, thanks very much. Bye for now.